All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm excited to be welcoming our next uh, panelist on stage for our next conversation, which is entitled Understanding Crowd Movement uh, to Optimize Customer Journeys. So this conversation is powered by Parkhub, and we're really excited to have to Tony Albanese, the Chief Revenue Officer at Parkhub, Christian Lau, the Chief Technology Officer at LAFC, and Jamie Leonoff, Director of New York Hockey Holdings with the New York Islanders. So welcome to the three of you. Thank you so much for jumping on stage here and, and appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Great to be yeah, here. Thank you. So basic question to, to get the ball rolling here, but it's it's one I think is very relevant. And, and the three of you have very uh, complimentary but distinct backgrounds. So I, I think this panel is nicely rounded today and I'm excited to, to chat with the three of you. And the basic question is, uh, what is the first thing you think of when you contemplate the customer journey for a fan as we sit here at the end of July 2021? Obviously, there's been a lot of change the last 18 months. Obviously, people are preparing for um, more change coming in the next 18 months or so and wanted to kind of level set with each of you. And maybe, Tony, if you wouldn't mind batting lead off, what do you think of when you hear that, that phrase customer journey uh, right now? Parking. No, just <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's changed. It's changed, uh, you know, over the, over the last several years, pretty significantly, you know, as to how kind of we think about it, uh, in our business and, as well as the business at large, um, you know, used to you think the customer journey sort of started maybe, you know, at the gate, um, you know, we obviously it, at Park Hub, we like to think about, well, okay, let's ship that idea. Like what's the parking experience like, how do we make that the best? And then you know, over the past several years, that's really you know, couch to seat uh, is, is is how most people think of it. And and then, you know, over the past year with with not having fans in stadium, I think the digital experience is now part of that part of that journey. Uh, so it almost never ends, um, you know, with with all the, you know, fan facing applications and interactive touch points that every every team and venue you know now has. Um, it's it's all about connecting with that fan really 365 days a year and then you know, that's their journey. And some of that is physical and some of it's, you know, digital. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're seeing many, many teams embrace that, you know, more fully um, today than did, you know, two years ago. And, and it didn't even exist, you know, maybe, maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. Jamie, from an Islanders perspective, same question to you. I, I think I completely agree with Tony. One of the biggest focuses we have with UBS Arena is making sure that we cover all elements of the customer experience journey from the couch and all the way through till they leave the venue. And I, I guess I have to say parking is something that's been front and center for us. So as we um uh -oh. we lost, I know she's having some Wi-Fi issues. So Christian, we'll have you pinch it real quick and as we get Jamie back in here, but same question to you on, on the customer journey, obviously with LAFC uh, being in the middle of a massive, massive market. Um, curious how you're kind of approaching it as we sit here in, in July, 2021. Sure, thanks Taylor. You know, for, for LAFC, um, you know, everything starts with the customer having a mobile device in their hand, no matter where they're at on any given day. Um, you know, we want to engage any and every way that we can. And so, you think about, you know, the mobility piece of it, the ticketing side of it, uh, the mobile ordering piece, all of these things exist uh, in our venue now. Um, and then you think about parking, which is a big deal for everyone. Um, and for us, you know, we work with Park Hub because we're trying to be as efficient as we can. Um, for us, the customer journey is all about eliminating friction, right, at every point in their journey. So whether it's coming into a parking lot, you know, walking into the venue, uh, getting a wristband at a club space or buying, you know, merchandise or food and beverage at a concession stand. You know, all of these things we look at, they're always focal points and we're always iterating to make them, you know, the best possible experience they can be. Mm -hmm. And so when we think of this journey, what are some new elements that maybe have had to be added to this customer journey recently that maybe fans are expecting when they, uh, are you know coming back to the arena or the ballpark or the stadium nowadays that are uh, top of mind for you guys and I'm, I'm you know curious Tony bring it back to you from the Parker yeah. perspective on that question first but what questions mo mobile device everything everything's on the mobile device um, 
when we started, you know, our, our company, you know, we, we had to get our, our sport team partners, you know, many of them on board with like, Hey, why don't you move to mobile ticketing? Why don't we get rid of these paper things? Um, and we, we, we've gone way far the other direction now, which is great. It's great for us as, you know, a, a technology company. Um, but everything's on the mobile device. So for us, that's, you know, making sure that um, whatever mobile experience that a uh, fan is using, the parking pass is easy to find. You know, can we work with the app provider to make sure that that parking pass appears like your, you know, your your uh, uh, airline ticket does at the airport? You know, how can they access that? Can they, you know, if you're using mobile, you know, mobile wallet, mobile payments, loyalty programs, you know, is that fully integrated in our platform so that the, the the fan can just pay for parking the same way they might pay for, you know, a beer or a, a, a snack in, inside the venue. Um, because that's where the, that fan is going to expect to be able to transact. Um, so for us, it's, you know, stitching together that mobile first experience into everything, you know, including the first and last thing they do, which is, which is park a vehicle or, you know, we're even starting to work with ride share. So how can we, you know, make sure that ride share can have access where it needs to. So, um, it's all about that, that handheld device in the, in the fan's hand and, and, and making sure that's a seamless experience for them and each part of their, their access to the venue. And Christian, from an LAFC MLS perspective, what kind of new expectations maybe have popped up in the last 18 months or so from fans that you've had to adapt to? Um, you know, most of, of what you're seeing in the market today uh, at venues, so arenas and stadiums, at Bank of California Stadium, we had already had most of those things in place, with the exception of mobile ordering in mass you know we started doing mobile ordering back in 2019 uh, using artificial intelligence right so it was cool but it, it wasn't as efficient as it is now because we have actual menus and things that people can order from um but you know for us you know we always had this idea that we wanted to go cashless for example and then the state and the county of los angeles basically said you will be cashless and so we are cashless um because we didn't have a choice. And it's interesting operationally because you would think that we would have some friction there and there would be some headwinds, but there's been none. Uh, we don't have reverse ATMs. We don't have any kind of infrastructure to support, you know, a cashless venue, um, but it's just worked out. And so I think customers, you know, they're, they're already using Apple Pay. They're using their, you know, their credit or their debit card. So that, that was a non-issue for us. Um, if anything, what we've learned on the mobile ordering side of thing is you, you do have a, a customer base for that. Um, but frankly, a lot of people, a lot of customers just wanted to get back to a live event and they just want to buy beer and they want to stand in line and belly up at a concession stand to do it. Um, you know, honestly, I thought that our uptake on mobile was going to be 100 percent and everybody would just transact on their mobile device. And it's been the exact opposite. And it's just. I think it's there's almost this nostalgic response right because we've been through a pandemic people just want to get back to 2019 man like over time the technology will definitely start to to permeate a little bit more and i do think you know mobile ordering specifically will continue to 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 climb uh but people just kind of want to get back to how things were and so that that's what we're seeing hmm. interesting and that makes sense yeah it was, it's it an old comfort to go to a ball game or a match or whatever and, and just get your pretzel in line beer. For beer. I don't know if I'm so nostalgic about the standing in line for the beer, but interesting. <laughs> some people are. Interesting. Well, our lines are, our lines the, are very efficient, though, to be clear. On the reverse ATMs, uh, we have a client that went cashless and installed these reverse ATMs. And then after a season, I said, how, how often do people, you know, use the reverse ATM? And they said, they don't never, <laughs> almost never. So, so if you're going cashless out there, uh, don't worry about the reverse ATM. It's the moral of the story. So, <laughs> exactly. there you go. Interesting. Jamie, welcome back. Sorry, we lost you for a couple of minutes, but we were uh, running through a couple of questions. Mainly the one I want to ask you that we can just build off of what Christian and Tony just talked about was, new fan expectations maybe that have transpired over the last 18 months that, that the Islanders have had to take into account um, as fans have come back. And, you know, it kind of goes both ways. Tony was saying, you know, mobile, mobile. Christian saying, hey, you know, let's get back to some nostalgic times. I'm curious where the Islanders land on that. 
Yeah, well, great day for a power outage, so I apologize. But I, I completely agree with the mobile perspective. Honestly, what we've really seen with COVID is that people are actually three to five years ahead of where they were in the span of 12 months. And that's pushing people into their phones more and more, not just for the social elements, but really for payments. And you're looking at Apple Pay and Google Pay. You're looking at things like mobile ordering. You're looking at all of these amazing innovations that actually have been around a while, but you're really seeing them take off. And that's really exciting for a building because it'll really optimize how lines flow and ultimately how people experience a venue. But it's crazy because these things are not necessarily new. Right. They're more so just being talk about QR codes. Can we can we can we talk about that sea change? I mean, the United States, nobody in the US knew how to scan a QR code with their phone, you know, 24 months ago. And now anytime someone sees a QR code, you scan it because you know something's gonna happen. My my favorite comment is is always Hey, have you seen the new stuff with QR codes? <laughs> yeah, those have been around a while. But it's, it's great to see people. <laughs> We're actually delivering parking receipts with QR codes now. So that's that's an interesting innovation that we just we just rolled out to get rid of the paper credit card receipt in those areas where you have to provide a receipt to the customer. Uh, you can do it with a QR code. It's interesting. I was going to bring up QR codes. Is there anything else in that kind of category, um, or maybe it was around for a little while, but it just got a, a real boost during you know the last eighteen months or so? Um, and maybe it just kind of popped in the in the mind of of fans as, hey, this is something I previously didn't really want, but now it's like a must have. Well, yeah, I will tell you, uh, and I'm sure you guys are seeing it in your markets too. But in LA County, if you over the last you know, let's call it 16 months. If you went out to eat, if you were brave enough to go out to eat and you were on an outside terrace, everything is mobile payment, right? So yeah. the point of sales now are handheld. Um, it's all about NFC. And so Apple Pay by far, Google Pay is there as well, but Apple Pay by far, the, the usage is just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And you look at it, it's everywhere. It's QSRs, it's high-end restaurants. Um, you know, you go to 7-Eleven, wherever it might be, like everybody's using contactless payment. Um, and a lot of places don't take cash, like I was telling you, so we don't take cash anymore. A lot of restaurants don't take cash um, as well. And it has everything to do with, you know, the handling of it. But then also there's a coin shortage still, which most people don't realize is a real thing. And so they can't give us that change. And so that's been a challenge. Um, but the NFC payment has really taken off. It was already a large part of our business um, at Bank of California Stadium. And now it's it's doubled, right? Because everybody is used to that behavior. So people that might have been hesitant in the past have had to learn this behavior because they've just been out in the world and that's what you do. Makes sense. I know when I'm in the in line at a grocery store and someone just busts out cash, I'm like, oh, hurry up. It's just, it's just, let's go, let's go. And it's uh, just normal now. It's it's uh, it's amazing how that just rapidly increases. Um, I'd love to hear from each of you if we can dive into like specific uh, partner case studies potentially of where you've had great success in working with a tech provider or you know vendor uh, solution where brought them in really significantly impacted your your fan experience customer journey and maybe it's something that you accelerated during the last eighteen months that you you know kind of had on your roadmap further out but you were kind of forced to accelerate it because I've um, that's been one of the biggest trends here at Sport Techies. We're just seeing that so many of the, the leading teams, arenas, ballparks had to accelerate their innovation roadmap, so to speak. I'm curious if you guys had any noteworthy case studies that come to mind and maybe Jamie, I'll, I'll direct that to you to start. I, I might be in uh, the toughest position because we're moving into new building in November. Yeah. And so most of our innovation is is upcoming but things that we've seen from other venues that we like um, on the parking front, we've seen a lot of license plate recognition systems in Europe. And mm. the ultimate goal there is that the customer doesn't have to input their their numbers anymore. They can actually just drive through and have the gate go up. We're, we're seeing all kinds of, of great things on the data and analytics front from a customer crowd flow perspective. We're seeing a lot of surprise delight reward strategies for season ticket member retention. Mm. And so there's a bunch of things that actually work together for us, and we'll be excited to show them off in November when we open the new arena. I love it. I love that that drive up license plate detector concept. That's that's pretty slick. Tony, anything to add to that? Thoughts on on the question and actually how that concept impacts parking? 
Yeah. So, well, the, the LPR thing is is something that that we are currently exploring. We are um, looking at some solutions where not for ticketed events because you you have an issue tying the the ticketed parking pass with the license plate. Um, the tickets don't understand license plates, uh, but for you know kind of your daily you know or non ticketed you know where you're not selling a parking pass in the ticketing platform, uh, some free flow um type operations that use lpr to capture a license plate on entry and then the the the, the guest scans a qr code ma matches their license plate puts in their payments credential and then when they leave they're automatically billed for the time that they're in the lot so you don't have to have any equipment you know other than lpr reader which is very affordable today so mm -hmm. we're looking at some of those kind of technologies to your question is there a partner or, or something we've done recently that um, maybe went better than expected um, so we launched um, a little test uh, product where we're pushing real-time parking inventory uh, and pricing data into the fan-facing application. So, um, you know, people who aren't season ticket holders often don't purchase uh, parking in advance. Um, so, you know, how could we get those people engaged and purchase parking in advance? It's a much better experience when someone does that rather than paying on site. So. Uh, they can simply go into their, you know, potentially the LFC, LAFC app and hit the parking tab, see in real time what parking is available while they're on their way, and then go ahead and buy parking in a parking area that they like and, and get, you know, turn by turn directions uh, pushed down to them so they can get to the right spot. So we did a test of that. Um, it did very, very, very well. So we'll be rolling that out um, to other partners here shortly. So that'd be, that'll be one. Nice. Okay. Love it. Christian, same question to you. Noteworthy kind of tech solutions partners, providers that, that you think the audience would be interested in knowing about. Um, yeah, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that we have in flight. Uh, I would say probably half a dozen projects. Uh, the pandemic didn't do us any favors, so things got delayed a little bit. But we're really focused on, you know, face identification for ticketing, uh, for age verification and payment. We're also working around a couple of autonomous retail concepts. Uh, one that's, you know, basically a retrofit of an existing space plus portable uh, autonomous retail just walk out. So we, we hope to bring a couple of things to market for 2022. Um, we love parking, uh, as you know, as we all do. But, you know, only 20 percent of our our customer base actually parks a car. Everybody else comes in on Metro or ride share. Uh, plus, the state of California actually owns our parking lot. So we, we don't get too immersed in parking technology only because you know, it would, it's, it, you know, well, over time, we hope that we're going to be less than 20%. You know, that that's kind of the goal, the objective uh, of the organization is to have as much sustainable, uh, you know, like multimodal transportation opportunities uh, as we can. Um, but yeah, 2022, I think will be exciting for us. That's when we plan to launch some things. Right now, we're just trying to get through this year um, and, and just make things as efficient as possible. So a little tease. Love it. Makes sense. Makes sense. And I wanted to go back to the crowd movement concept. And Christian, you kind of alluded to one earlier. It was like, hey, we're seeing people just want to belly up again and order a hot dog and have a good time. Um, I want to build on that a little bit and see if there's any tr uh, additional trends you guys have noticed in terms of crowd movement changes. And maybe it's something that's been adjusted or fans are you know, taking a different path for their ingress egress or something like that that's really noteworthy. That's maybe transpired over the last 18 months that will impact us going forward. Um, so, you know, Jamie, if you want to lead us off on that, I'm curious how you guys are preparing for you know, obviously the new arena and expectations from fans and how they're moving in and out of the arena to have a, a smooth transition to and from the, the game. Well, what, one of the interesting things from COVID actually is that the amount of people that are preparing to come to games now going on the website, reading emails is at a record high. And they're learning about things that we've been offering for a while and it's actually changing their behavior so in a certain way we're trying to capitalize on that but ultimately i i think that things like prepaid parking using your phone any type of digital experience is going to be magnified and we're really focused on developing those out so that our fans can interact with the arena in new ways in ways that they probably haven't in the past so it's, for us, it's a combination of education, but also making sure that the platforms that we develop are functional, um, strong, and additive to the overall experience. Hmm. Interesting. Tony, Christian, same question to you guys. Who wants to go first? 
Well, I, can, I can give you some some sort of data that we've seen from from venues that have that have opened. Um, you know, we're fortunate to be based here in, in Dallas, Texas, and so uh, we got to see and I actually got to attend the first uh, full capacity sporting event in the U.S. when the Rangers uh, opened the season, um, and we're seeing a lot more vehicles. So the the fan per vehicle um, is going down. So we're we're at like two fans per vehicle approximately. Uh, that was you know around three or higher uh, pre-COVID. Um, so in 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 venues where there's ample parking, uh, we are seeing increased parking loads uh, compared compared with historic data. And um, and then in areas you know like. LAFC, uh, you know, where where maybe the parking isn't as plentiful or driving is a little more difficult, that hasn't changed as much. Um, but in you know markets like you know a, a Dallas or an Atlanta or, or somewhere like that, you're seeing you know increased demand for parking, and then couple that with people that have no idea where the parking lots are anymore or how they're supposed to approach. So mass confusion on where they're supposed to go. Uh, so as Jamie uh, hinted at, um, you know, people are you know, need to get on the website or need to get on their 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 app to figure out you know where to go. And then those that don't, you need to have some really good signage and good good traffic direction to get them to the right spot. Makes sense, Christian. To you, other than the kind of the belly up, nostalgic, go back to comfort level. What other crowd movement trends are you seeing and anticipating? Yeah, well, you know, the fact that we have a, a no bag slash clear bag policy has really helped things at security because that's always been the biggest hang up, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, getting people through the magnetometers, which we're working on a new solution to get rid of magnetometers, by the way, so you can just walk in. So we've, we've got some some stuff we're working on there. Right. Um, we brought in a new access control partner, Access AG. Uh, last year we were closed, but we brought them in. Um, and the rate of... Uh, of entry is just next level. When you look at these these units, um, you know, the, the, the ingress is just like off the charts fast. And the customers understand it's like NFC, primarily NFC, but you can do a barcode. So you got people coming in, um, you know, we work with uh, Armored Things on the crowd intelligence piece so we can actually, you know, monitor the concourse, monitor our club spaces. And what we're seeing, interestingly enough, is people are, are and not always, so this isn't like a, a blanket statement, but a lot of customers, um, you know, they are abiding by the physical distancing rules. And so when you see them, you know, you don't have people on top of each other, usually that's not always the case. If we score a goal, for example, people kind of cluster if they're on the concourse kind of thing. Um, but you're, you're seeing people self-police there. Hmm. And then when you look at the belly up lines, you know, back in 2019, they were kind of chaotic, um, but we're definitely more efficient now. You know, we've added additional point of sale units um, and we do have that mobile ordering piece, which does help that quite a bit. And we brought Hawking back, uh, you know, using mobile devices only, no cash, um, which has also helped. And we have more portables uh, throughout the concourse to sell beer and, and other popular items. And I, I think we're, we're at a good spot at the moment. Hmm. And Christian, to build off of what Jamie said, I thought it was a really interesting comment where she's like, hey, we're still having people obviously come to the arena, but they're more prepared than they may have been previously. They're reading our website, checking our emails. Are you, are you seeing a similar trend with um, about the fans being a little more prepared and in, in the know than in the past? Um, yeah, I think there's definitely an uptick. Um, if you look at LAFC historically, our, our customer engages our communications heavily already. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that has everything to do with, you know, the type of communication we send out. Our open rates on email are very high. Uh, the level of engagement on any random day in the app is very high. Even in the middle of the pandemic last year, when we weren't even playing yet, our mobile app was getting a ton of usage, uh, you know, because we have content on it. Um, but yeah, Jamie's absolutely correct. I think teams that might not have had that engagement in their communication in the past do now because their customers want to understand, you know, what the expectations are and what they need to do on, on an event day, where in the past they just kind of showed up. Right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. With uh, five minutes to go, I want to ask some forward future looking questions for the three of you. And so obviously we just talked about how a lot of things were accelerated during the last 18 months and just needed to happen, needed to arrive 
um, to make fans feel comfortable and, and excited to, to come back to the arenas. Um, in the next three to five years, where do you think we're going to kind of land in terms of the biggest changes to the, the customer fan journey uh, as compared to where we are now, July 2021? And um, I'm obviously curious to hear from all three of you, but Tony, be curious from your perspective about lead off on this question. Um, how far am I looking? Five years? I get five years. Five years. So in the in the immediate future, I'm gonna take the, five. Take the yeah. five year, the five year okay. view. Okay, this goes away. I need that anymore. Replace with what? You. So there's, it, 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 maybe it's in your pocket, but today you're pulling out your phone to pay for something. You're pulling it to show your ticket. You're tapping somewhere. You know, I I think that um, passive location detection and identification. Um, we're already playing with that here, just to be mm. completely transparent. Um, why do I have to show something? Why don't you just know who I am in a passive way, be able to know that my preferred method of payment is what it is. And then when I go to the concession stand or go to retail, I, as, as Christian is playing around with the, the, the uh, what did you call it? The, 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 the retail where you just go and grab something uh, autonomous retail, yeah, autonomous just walk retail. out. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I think that goes everywhere. Um, and we're not whipping out our phones to do everything, which is great in one way. And then, you know, now you're going to have to figure out how to get eyeballs back on that screen again. So that's where I think we're in five years. And that, that identification detection, how does that come about? Is it still sensing the phone in your pocket or is it facial recognition? Is it, you know, reading your license plate as you drive up and stitching yeah. all that data together? Yes. I mean, that's, that's how we're looking at it. Um, you know, we've developed some some device location technology internally that that we think is pretty interesting. But there's, you know, it's whether it's facial biometric. Um, you know, we're working with some, you know, in the in the venue vendors that you know have a, a, a bar where you can just walk up and get a drink, and you know, mm -hmm. it's using biometric data to, to do all that. So, um, yeah, I think it's a combination of all of those all of those data points to figure out who's doing what, where, when, and what needs to happen. Got it. Jamie, same question to you, looking three to five years out. Obviously, you're, you're getting into a new arena. Um, I'm sure you've tried to future-proof the arena as much as that particular phrase allows itself to be done. Um, but I'm curious to hear from your perspective. I think what we're really going to see is the next generation of personalization, the ability to capture data, organize it, attach it to the customer, and really deliver them a unique experience based on things they've done in the past, both inside and out the arena, on our own platforms or on partner platforms, and really use that information to deliver an experience that's just for you. And whether that's push notifications, SMS, email, I think the more we go down the path, BI departments are growing, more money is being spent on the infrastructure in general, and we're really gonna see a lot of personalization come out in the industry in the next couple of years. Hmm. Christian, same question to you to close us out. Um, yeah, so ditto to what Tony and Jamie said. Um, absolutely right. You know, at the end of the day, I think in the next, it will be three to five years. And what's interesting is, is some of the stuff that we're working on, especially, you know, you think about, you know, the just walk out tech I was talking about, the autonomous retail. Um, you think about, you know, gates and having the ability to just walk into a venue using, you know, face identification for your ticket. Um, and walking through a very passive security system that has better detection than a magnetometer, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then like you're walking into a target, right? So that's kind of like the future. And then when you think about face identification for age verification and payment at concessions or even retail, um, I think all of these things, we're working on them now and they sound exciting, but they're kind of like this pie in the sky thing. But because of the labor shortage that all of our venues um, are experiencing right now, that's likely not going to go away anytime soon. Hmm. And so now there's this use case where, wait, if we can bring in technology that bypasses the need for like a heavy labor type solution, then we probably need to look at it, right? And then when you think about some of these tech solutions, um, they're not extraordinarily expensive and they will be scalable. And so I think they're a lot more attractive. Um, and I'll liken it to mobile ticketing, right? So what, 2019, we were already mobile, but we talked to other venues and they were still using paper tickets. And there was a lot of hand wringing around. Well, do we move away from PDF? Customers like it, all this stuff. Pandemic hits, now everybody's digital tickets because you don't have a choice. 
Um, and I think that's what's going to happen with the tech stack when it comes to, you know, the autonomous stuff that, that I referenced over time. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's a great way to, to close out this panel. I know my team at Sport Tech will be excited to cover everything you guys just touched on over the next three to five years. Uh, but Tony, Christian, Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. It's been a really strong Horizon Summit, and we owe it to our, our speakers who've given us some time out of their day. So looking forward to chatting again in the near future, and, and uh, thanks again for the time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you. Take care. See you. Bye.